Hello today's video we have the following content. Who is most qualified to sit in the center? Kung Fu superstars took a group photo. Today I want to talk about my idol when I was a child, Mr. Bruce Lee. Let's take a look at the family photo first, which ones do you recognize? Kung Fu superstar family photo. Group photo, who sits in the center? There is no doubt that no one dares to sit except Bruce Lee. What is Bruce Lee's merit and why is he qualified to sit in the center? The author believes that there are mainly four reasons. First, the Kung Fu itself, Bruce Lee's Kung Fu, 99% of foreigners will admire. Bruce Lee grew up abroad since he was a child, and studied under the founder of Wing Chun, Ip Man. Later, he opened a school abroad to accept disciples. He had actual combat with many foreigners who refused to obey him in the streets. He also fought in the ring and beat up small gangsters on the street. With the influence of later movies, Bruce Lee's actual combat ability is almost a household name abroad. Ip Man's Wing Chun, plus the Jeet Kune Do he created, 5% fat rate on his body, bursting butterfly muscles on the upper body, and lightning fast punches and kicks, made Bruce Lee invincible in actual combat. When discussing Bruce Lee's actual combat ability, among domestic martial art stars, only Jackie Chan was not convinced. When asked who would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight between himself and Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan hesitated and said, let him win, dot. Jackie Chan played a minor role in Bruce Lee's movie and was beaten by Bruce Lee. The second is the level of the movie. Bruce Lee died young and made only four and a half movies in his life. Those who have seen his movies have this feeling. The movie belongs to the realistic school. To exaggerate, it is a documentary with a story plot. According to the director's later recollection, when shooting a movie, Bruce Lee was usually asked to slow down the speed of his punches and kicks, otherwise the camera could not shoot it. In that era without any special effects, Bruce Lee's movies have achieved great success in both domestic and foreign markets. Stills from the movie Enter the Dragon. Third, Martial Arts Research and Achievements. Although he was born into a martial arts background, Bruce Lee was not a reckless man. He graduated from the Department of Philosophy at Washington State University in Seattle, USA. With hard work and personal understanding, he opened the Gen Fang Kung Fu Institute in the United States in 1962, created Jeet Kune Do in 1967, and was listed as one of the seven great martial arts masters in the world by the International Martial Arts Authority magazine Black Belt in 1971. Bruce Lee not only has extraordinary Kung Fu, but also has his own unique insights into martial arts. Use the finite as the infinite, and the lawless as the lawful is his classic statement. Bruce Lee's philosophy of integrating philosophy and martial arts. Fourth, influence at home and abroad. Speaking of Bruce Lee's influence, there is no doubt about it abroad. Bruce Lee Day was established abroad. When foreigners see any information about Bruce Lee, they immediately say Bruce Lee. When Bruce Lee was alive, there were too many Bruce Lee fans abroad, and they could be seen almost everywhere among young people. On the contrary, in China, many people look down on Bruce Lee saying that he is a typical representative of fame over strength. A person's influence is closely related to his identity. So, what is Bruce Lee's identity? Bruce Lee is a martial arts master, actor, screenwriter, director, producer, kung fu movie star, martial arts fighter, martial arts philosopher, pioneer of world martial arts reform, father of MMA, founder of UFC, and father of nunchaku. The English word kung fu was created for him. When it comes to Kung Fu superstars, many people first think of Bruce Lee. When it comes to Chinese Kung Fu superstars, the first thing that comes to mind is Bruce Lee. Let's take a look at which stars imitate Bruce Lee. Shen Yilin, Liang Xia Long, Jackie Chan, Chen Guiquan, etc. Of course, the one who admires Bruce Lee the most and loves to imitate Bruce Lee the most is Stephen Chow. For the family photo of the Kung Fu superstar above, the others are standing, only Bruce Lee is sitting and there are a few people next to Bruce Lee, and their child. Next news. In 1973, Bruce Lee died in his lover's home. What happened that night? How did Ding Pei explain it? On July 20th, 1973, Kung Fu superstar Bruce Lee suddenly died of illness, and everyone was stunned. Bruce Lee was in such good health, how could he leave without any signs? People were full of questions. Soon, the media revealed that Bruce Lee died at his lover Ding Pei's home on the night of July 20th. This made things even more mysterious. What happened that night? Bruce Lee was from Foshan, Guangdong. He was born in San Francisco, USA on November 27, 1940. When he was only three months old, Bruce Lee starred in a movie, 
playing the young Wan Leilu in the Cantonese film Golden Gate Girl directed by Wu Jingxia. This was also the first time Bruce Lee and the movie met. Shortly after Bruce Lee was born, his parents applied for American citizenship for him, and then his parents took him to live in Hong Kong, my country. Bruce Lee was particularly fond of martial arts, and briefly learned Tai Chi, Hungar, and Choi Lee fought. At the age of 13, he became a disciple of Ip Man and learned Wing Chun from him. Bruce Lee was very talented, and his master Ip Man liked him very much, so he taught him all his skills. Ip Man said to Bruce Lee, you have a congenital problem with your legs and feet. The physiognomy book says that this is a short-lived phase. You must be more careful when doing things in the future. Ip Man hoped that his apprentice would use martial arts to do serious things and not cause trouble. Bruce Lee was very studious, and under Ip Man's guidance, his martial arts improved rapidly. Bruce Lee liked to compete with others. Not long after, he got into trouble in Hong Kong. His parents were worried that he would be retaliated against, so they sent him to study in the United States. After arriving in the United States, in order to promote Chinese Kung Fu, Bruce Lee opened a Jun Fang Kung Fu Institute near the school, specializing in teaching foreigners to learn Chinese Kung Fu, and the business was very good. At that time, in the Chinese martial arts circle in the United States, there was a tacit rule that everyone could not teach martial arts to foreigners. But Bruce Lee didn't care about these and accepted many foreign apprentices. Moreover, after Bruce Lee became famous for teaching foreigners Kung Fu, he directly said in an interview that Chinese martial artists did not accept foreign apprentices because they are influenced by conservative traditional ideas. Bruce Lee also criticized some bad practices of Chinese martial arts calls, such as the factions not only fighting overtly and covertly in order to compete for superiority, but also saying bad things, spreading rumors and cursing people, and slandering each other. Bruce Lee angered the Chinese martial arts circle in the United States because of this. Those people wanted to teach this ignorant kid a lesson, so they kept sending people to challenge him. Bruce Lee was a martial arts expert who defeated challengers one after another, and he became famous because of this. However, when fighting with others, even if you can beat the opponent, you will get hurt, and he got a lot of injuries in the competition. During this time, Bruce Lee met the love of his life, Linda Amory. After they fell in love, they got married in 1964. After getting married, Bruce Lee had a heavy burden on his shoulders, and he began to concentrate on his career. In 1966, Bruce Lee became a star in the United States for starring in the hit drama The Green Hornet. In Hollywood, the Chinese are severely prejudiced, and they believe that Chinese can only play rough and barbaric roles. After being excluded in Hollywood, Bruce Lee decided to return to Hong Kong to develop. Bruce Lee is an internationally renowned Kung Fu superstar. After returning to China, he continued to receive invitations and was highly sought after. This made Bruce Lee's value continue to rise, and many strict requirements were also put forward for film and television companies, such as the investment in the film he participated in must not be less than 600,000, and foreigners must be involved. This discouraged many film and television companies and forced them to give up Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee's requirements were too high, and most film and television companies in Hong Kong could not meet them. Only a few such as Shaw brothers could meet them. But Run Run Shaw was unwilling to condescend and negotiate with Bruce Lee, which caused Shaw brothers to miss the opportunity to cooperate with Bruce Lee. In order to cooperate with Bruce Lee, Golden Harvest Films catered to his preferences and sent Bruce Lee a bunch of kung fu films, which successfully aroused Bruce Lee's interest. As a result, Golden Harvest Films was lucky enough to pick up a loophole and cooperate smoothly with Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee cooperated with Golden Harvest Films to shoot hit TV series such as Fist of Fury and Way of the Dragon, repeatedly breaking the box office records of Hong Kong movies and making Golden Harvest Films a lot of money. However, just when Bruce Lee's career was booming, the news of his sudden death came, and everything suddenly stopped. People couldn't believe that Bruce Lee had passed away until they saw the scene of Bruce Lee's funeral on TV, and everyone had to accept this cruel fact. At this time, people had another question in their minds. Bruce Lee had always been very healthy, so how could he suddenly die of illness? The forensic doctor found marijuana, amoxicillin and painkillers in Bruce Lee's stomach. These three drugs are commonly used drugs and will not be fatal if taken alone. The media is very powerful. It didn't take long to expose a lot of explosive news. Some media said that Bruce Lee bought two huge insurance policies for himself two months before his death. Some media also said that Bruce Lee did not die at his home, but at the home of his lover Ding Pei, who was the last person Bruce Lee saw. In addition to Ding Pei, Bruce Lee's friend, 
Raymond Chow, the owner of Golden Harvest Films, was also present at the scene. Ding Pei was afraid of being involved in the whirlpool of Bruce Lee's death, so she lied to escape, but in the face of so much evidence, she had nowhere to escape and was under tremendous pressure. Various conspiracy theories followed, and some even suspected that Ding Pei and Raymond Chow killed Bruce Lee. Ding Pei stood up to clarify, crying and saying, I can't possibly kill the person I love. Then she told everyone what happened that day. On April 20, Bruce Lee and Ding Pei were together. In the afternoon, Raymond Chow came to Bruce Lee to discuss filming. They chatted for a while, and Bruce Lee said he had a headache. Ding Pei gave Bruce Lee a painkiller. Seeing that Bruce Lee was not feeling well, Raymond Chow asked him to take a rest and talk about the movie another day. When leaving, Zhu Inhui was worried and went into the room to see Bruce Lee. He saw that he was awake and nothing serious happened. They agreed to meet a business partner together in the evening, and then left. After Zhu Inhui left, Ding Pei stayed in the room to watch TV, while Bruce Lee slept in the bedroom. Ding Pei called Bruce Lee several times to see if he had woken up, but Bruce Lee did not respond. Ding Pei thought he was too tired and was still sleeping, so she did not disturb him. Zhu Inhui called Ding Pei twice at 8.45 and 9.15 in the evening. Ding Pei said that Bruce Lee was still sleeping soundly and they would arrive later. Bruce Lee was usually very punctual, and he slept for several hours today. This made Zhu Inhui feel vaguely uneasy. Zhu Inhui called Ding Pei again before the party was over. Ding Pei cried on the phone and said anxiously, I called him several times, but he couldn't wake up. Zhu Inhui heard it and rushed to Ding Pei's house. After arriving, seeing Bruce Lee in a coma, Zhu Inhui immediately called his family doctor, but the doctor's phone was turned off and he couldn't get through. Ding Pei contacted her family doctor at Zhu Inhui's reminder. Not long after, the doctor arrived. The doctor gave Bruce Lee a painkiller equalgesic and rushed Bruce Lee to the hospital. But after arriving at the hospital, Bruce Lee still couldn't be saved. Ding Pei felt that Bruce Lee's death was caused by himself. Bruce Lee was obsessed with martial arts and often challenged others to fight, so he was injured countless times. Although these injuries were not fatal, they caused serious damage to his body over the years. Later, Bruce Lee focused all his energy on making movies. In order to make his image on the screen more perfect, he removed his sweat glands. In addition, he also used electric shocks to quickly build muscles. Bruce Lee's actions were very harmful to his body. When Bruce Lee was filming movies, there were many fighting scenes and he was under great pressure at work. Two months ago, he fainted in the theater. Recently, he always had headaches and felt unwell, and finally he was overwhelmed. The forensic report showed that Bruce Lee had cerebral edema and was allergic to painkillers. Ding Pei made him take painkillers, which worsened his condition and eventually led to Bruce Lee's death. Both the forensic doctor and the police believe that Bruce Lee died of illness and was not deliberately murdered by others. But this conclusion is too simple, and some people do not agree with it. Instead, they are more interested in the plot of the detective drama full of conspiracy theories. Thank you for watching the video, please leave your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button. If this is the first time you watch a video on the channel,